내가 쳤네 Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host Paul, aka Billy the Squid, and this video we're breaking down the brand new Netflix show Squid Game. It's an absolutely incredible first season that's filled with lots of twists and turns, and throughout this video we're going to be going over the story, ending, and what could be happening in season 2. Full spoilers ahead, so it's your choice whether you want to proceed beyond this point, but I warn you, there's no turning back. If you enjoyed the video, then please smash the thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe for breakdowns like this each and every day. Without the way, thank you for playing, now let's get into Season 1 of Squid Game. Okay, so Squid Game follows Ji Hun, a man who's down on his luck after losing just about everything that means something to him. His marriage failed, he lost his job, is in deep over his head with gangsters, and now faces the fact that his daughter is going to be leaving South Korea with her mother and new family. To make matters worse, his mother is also at death's door, and she requires medical attention in order to save her life. Seems like things are going worse than this channel is, however, his fortune seemingly changes when he meets a man at a train station that offers him the opportunity of a life and death time. Desperate for money, Ji Hun finds himself somewhat squidnapped and drafted into a battle royale between himself and 456 contestants. Or was it 455 because they're counting him? Look, either way, it's worth a grand prize of 45.6 billion, and obviously, everyone's desperate to get their hands on it. Throughout, we watch as the players are whittled down to one in games of red and green, honeycombs, tug of war, deadly hopscotch, and one that will have you losing your marbles due to the betrayals in it. The season is a blast to watch, and early on, it sets up this idea of division within colours that thematically ends up coming full circle by the end. The colours red and green are introduced, and these are actually classed as opposites on the colour spectrum. Both are mentioned in the passwords, they become the name of the first game, and even the contestants wear green whilst the guards don red. This show is absolutely laced with these opposing colours, and they in many ways very much represent the divide between the powerful and powerless. As we know from our own society, this divide is often showcased between the rich and poor, and we learn that there are a vast number of wealthy men who actually oversee the entire operation, and that this is all for their entertainment. Rather than being seen as people, the players are very much just numbers, and this is demonstrated in the fact that they are literally given these as their names. Along the way, Ji Hun meets an elderly man named Number One, and the fact that he's the first drafted into the game should give you a clue towards his true identity at the end. Ji Hun is the last number, and throughout the season, we watch as he very much works his way down to Number One. At one point, Number One even ends the game and gives the survivors of the first round a chance to go off and live their lives, but they all return desperate for the money. In the end, all that remains are Ji Hun and Sang Woo, two childhood friends who led very different lives but both found themselves in the same spot come the end of the game. The final competition is the titular Squid Game, and we watch as the thing they played as children decides who will live and die. It's an awesome final battle, and they even bring some rain in in order to add some dramatics to the showdown. Ji Hun best Sang Woo, but rather than killing him, he brings up the clause that if both players forfeit, then the game will be null and void, and thus they'll both get to go home. This will be for nothing, but Ji Hun would rather put a stop to the death than gain the money. However, rather than forfeiting, Sang Woo ends his own life because of what he's done when playing. All he does is make Ji Hun promise that he'll look after his mother, and then he stabs himself, leaving Ji Hun as the last man standing. Now whilst this is going on, we see a police officer whose brother disappeared investigating the island in an attempt to learn his fate. Throughout he sees things from the other side, but a big twist comes towards the end when we learn that his sibling is actually a character known as the front man who's running the operation. He attempts to alert the police to the whereabouts of the island as well as what's going on, but the fact that the game is still continuing at the end lets us know that the operation wasn't shut down. Now, one of the big questions surrounding the series is whether he survived or not. Towards the end of the season, he's shot, and though the character takes a tumble off a cliff into the ocean, we never actually see a body, and therefore, we can assume that he's still alive. Huang Jun Ho is only shot in the shoulder, much like his brother, and with the front man not dying from the wound, it is likely that his brother didn't either. However, we do know that he didn't shut down the Squid Games, so it'll be interesting to see how he's brought back in future seasons. Now after the prize money is given to Ji Hun, he returns home but upon getting there finds that his mother has died. 
due to him participating in the games, he wasn't there for her in her final few days and it's a devastating ending that feels like a real gut punch in what was an already extremely brutal series. It's at this point that we pick up one year later and discover that Ji-hun is still living life in the exact same manner that he was before he won. The money he sought after for so long was actually worth nothing to him in the end and the real people who meant something to him were lost whilst he tried to seek out these riches. It's very much a case of the only thing worse and not getting what you want is getting it and he's trapped in a state of grief by himself with life having lost its meaning. At this point he's given a card which is similar to the one that started everything off and on the back of it he finds an address which leads him to an apartment. Here he finds number one bedbound and we learn that he was actually behind the entire game. Much like Ji Hun, possessing all that money ended up meaning very little to him and in his boredom he created the games in order to entertain himself and his rich friends. He lived life believing that people wouldn't help one another and uses a drunk man across the street as confirmation of this. In his last few moments he plays one final game in which the pair bet whether anyone will stop to help him and because of their choices we see the cynicism within number one. Now number one, or rather Il Nam, only believed in the worst of humanity and his entire life led him to think that people were all self-centered and only interested in, well, their own interests. However, as he dies, we see that people actually arrive in order to help the man across the street and it's very much an F you to him in his final moments. Now we never learn whether Ilnam sees this, but in all honesty, it doesn't really matter. His entire life ended up becoming dedicated to the idea that he didn't need to help others because other people in his position would also be just as selfish. Ilnam could have shared his wealth with anyone at any time, but he believed deep down that people were all as bad as each other and that if they were where he was, that they wouldn't help him either. This was somewhat shown in the game of marbles, in which Jihan lied and cheered in order to get ahead. Though we will never know whether he knew of the drunk man's fate or not, it really doesn't matter as this moment inspires Ji-hun to do something with the money rather than letting it go to waste. Ji-hun gets a haircut and has it dyed red, showing that he is somewhat the one that is in the position of power now. Rather than being a malevolent D-head like the rest of the Reds though, he takes a player's brother out of an orphanage that she wanted to rescue him from and places him in sang mother's care who he makes extremely rich. He lives up to his two promises and though it seems like a happy ending, it's all quickly cut short when we realise that the game is still going. Though Ilnam died, the game didn't die with him and at a train station he comes across the man who recruited him, played by Gong Yu. You might recognise him from the seminal horror train to Busan and I believe that come the second season he will play a much bigger role. He is clearly still tied into the operation and Ji Hun takes the card from the person he was attempting to rope into the game. The season closes out with Ji-hun about to board a plane to LA in order to see his daughter but after calling the number on the card, he comes to the conclusion that the game is still going and that hundreds more people will die if he doesn't step in and do something about it. He tells the front man that he's coming for them and this of course carries a lot of weight for season 2. Now I believe that Ji-hun will meet with Huang Jun ho and that together the pair will end up going to the island in order to stop the games. Ji-hun was gassed during transport so he doesn't know how to get there. However, Huang Jun Ho does if he made it out and managed to swim back to the mainland. With Ji Hun's resources and newfound life, he'll be able to equip Huang Jun Ho with the necessary means to take down the Squid Game gang. This is obviously a big turn up for the books as one of the lessons he learned at his mother's death was not to abandon those that loved him, but he's very much abandoning hundreds of people to their deaths if he decides to travel to LA. He's damned if he does and damned if he doesn't and I see this more as an ending in which he's sacrificing his own happiness in order to help others. Again, this is something that Il Nam would never do and thus it's a great signal of the character coming full circle. Now there are other potentials for season 2 and we do know that the games have been going on for decades. There's evidence they even existed in the 80s and it would be interesting to explore not only their origins but also Il Nam's who of course founded them. There's also the fact that these are being run internationally and though it's a long shot, I'd love to see Netflix bring in the European and Western games as a series to show us what was happening there before we build to an overarching narrative involving all the winners. Either way, there's a lot of potential directions they could take it and I have to say I absolutely love this season and can't wait to see more. It was absolutely gripping not knowing who would live and die and it made for a season that I happily binged in one day just to get to what the outcome would be. 
This is a great character study that really gets to the meat of what it means to survive when it costs others so much, and I think the show handled a lot of its elements in spectacular fashion. Whenever a Korean show comes out on Netflix, I always try and cover it, as they're pretty much brilliant across the board, and this is no different. Squid Game pulled me right in, and because of that, it gets a 9.5 out of 10. Now obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the season, and apologies if I butchered the pronunciation of any of the names. Comment below and let me know, and as a thank you for interacting with the video, you'll be entered into a prize draw on the 30th of September, in which we're giving away 3 copies of Zack Snyder's DC Trilogy. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the season. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month, and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers if that's you. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of What If Episode 6, which will be linked on screen right now. We went over the full episode and pointed out all the easter eggs in it, so it's definitely worth checking out if you're a Marvel maniac. With that out of the way, thank you for sitting through the video. I've been Paul, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, peace.